Hey everyone, welcome to another Guitar Lessons live stream. My name is Chris Green. If you would, please hit the like button as we move forward. This is a free live stream available to you. My name is Chris Green. My whole channel is about practical tips and advice for guitar players. I'm gonna have to be pretty quick today. If you've seen any of my live streams, you know they usually don't go quick, but today's live stream specifically on a subject that comes up many times with beginner guitar players who want to know what chords you should learn first. Well, there are chords that are easy to play. My favorite easy chord and probably the easiest chord to play is this A2 chord. So you could learn that. But as far as usefulness goes, a lot of times when you're starting out on guitar, you don't know what chords to learn first because there's just so many out there. So it's best to learn if you can put in the work for it, it's best to learn a family of chords. These are chords that all go together. So my favorite ones I'm going to be sharing with you all in this video on four chords that every guitar player should know. I've got chord diagrams up on the screen. They'll be throwing up in just a little bit. If you missed my previous live stream this week, I talked about the major scale. I'm gonna be referencing a little bit of that going forward, but just so you know, the four chords, I'm gonna reveal the secrets, here we go. The four chords that we're going over are G major, C add nine, E minor seven, and then D major. I'm gonna show you how to play all of these straight from a beginner's perspective. So I've got friends and students who are learning guitar. I tell them all the time, grab yourself a capo and learn these four chords. So if you wanna join along, grab your guitar, Let's get started with the very first one. I've covered this on my channel many, many times. This, whoa, oh, hold on, <laughs> backwards here. This is our G major chord diagram. So what we're gonna do first, I want you to take your middle finger, whatever your picking hand is, I want you to put it on the third fret of the low E string. Give that a pluck, see if you can make some noise with it. Then your pointer finger is gonna be on the second fret of the A string, so these two strings that are on top. I've got my middle finger, then my pointer finger. On the diagram, this is middle finger. This is pointer finger, so there's the two there. And now these two dots at the bottom, what they want us to do is take our ring finger, put it on the third fret of the B string, that's the second to last string, and then our pinky is on the high E string. Right there, you have G major. Now starting out, if you're a beginner, this is gonna be a little bit challenging, okay? Our hands are not used to doing things like playing chords, but I really want you to commit as much as you can to learning these chords, no matter what the pain is, okay? There are certain types of pain that you wanna avoid. If you're feeling pain in your wrist or pain in your elbow or your shoulder, okay, that's pain that's probably a result of you're not doing things properly, okay? Maybe the way you're holding the guitar is incorrect, but when it comes to fretting chords, it's gonna be difficult. And it's probably the first thing you're gonna hear when you're strumming a G major chord, you're gonna hear something like this. So those two middle strings, the D and the G string, they're free to ring, and you'll hear that. Now a D and a G actually sounds pretty good together. That would be a G chord right there. But when we add our fingers, what's gonna happen first is we're not used to pressing down. So I want you to take your middle finger and third fret, pointer finger, second fret, and really pick them individually. Grab yourself a guitar pick, and don't hit all the strings just yet. I just want you to pluck the individual strings. Give that a go, okay? G major. Let's move on to the next one. We'll recap these in just a minute. This next one here is called the E minor seven chord. Now I want you to notice what our ring finger and pinky are in the exact same positions that they were for G major. So this is G major. Notice where the ring finger and the pinky are. This is E minor seven. So there's gonna be that similarity. These are why I want you to learn these all together. By learning them together, you have all these similar positions with this ring and pinky fingers. So the E minor seven chord, we're having our middle finger on the second fret of the A string. Our pointer finger is on the second fret of the D string. And on this one, you actually get to play all of the strings. So that's our open E string. 
That's our open G string. And of course, ring finger and pinky on the third frets of the B and the E strings. This E minor seven. Do the same thing you did with G major when you went through and plugged each string individually. I want you to listen out for, if you're hearing something that's kind of muted, you're probably not pressing down hard enough. If you hear something that sounds very buzzy, let's see if I can find a spot here. There we go. If it sounds really buzzy like that, like rattling wires, you've probably got your finger on top of one of these metal frets, these vertical lines right here. So what I want you to do is anytime we're fretting chords, I want you to aim for the middle of whatever this fret space is. So when I say second fret, I don't mean put your finger on this metal bar. I mean that this is fret space one, so this would be the first fret. This is fret space two, this would be the second fret. Try to aim for the middle as much as you can, especially when you're starting out, okay? That is E minor seven. Now watch how easy we can go to a C add nine. If you're looking at the chord diagram right now, boom, did you notice the difference? One dot changed. So what we need to do is from our E minor seven chord, we're gonna take our middle finger, slide it to the third fret of the A string. And now this one has an X on it. This X means you do not strum the low E string when you're fretting a C add nine chord, okay? So, so far we've had G. Look how similar, similar this G shape is to our, this is G, G major. Now switch to C add nine. Do you see what changed? All we did is we took this middle finger and this pointer finger and we just moved them down one string each. C, G, E minor. Okay, there's one more, one more, and then we're gonna talk about how to pull this all together. And this is a D major chord. Now I've done a live stream, a bunch of videos on this D major chord already. But with this one, what I want you to know is to play whatever is most comfortable, okay? So your pointer finger is gonna be on the second fret of the G string. Your middle finger is gonna be on the second fret of the high E string. And then your ring finger is on the third fret of the B string. It kind of makes the shape of a sideways D. Do you see how it's kind of like an arrow pointing this way? Let's see if I can do this. Everything's reversed. So this is kind of like a D, like an arrow that's pointing down. That's D major. Another thing with D major is you want to watch out for this low E string and this A string. You don't want to hit those when you're playing a root position D major. How fun is that? Let's go back through one time. We've got G major here. To go to C add nine, we just need to walk these two fingers down one string each. And then from C add nine to E minor seven, we just have to move our middle finger over to the second fret. And then D major, there's a common anchor, which is our ring finger on this third fret of the B string. If you'll leave your ring finger in place throughout all of these chords, it really gives you an anchor of where to put your fingers. Notice that my ring finger is not changing. It's always on that third fret of the B string. So that's my D major, that's my C add nine, that's my G major, and that's my E minor. Now what I wanna to talk to you about is, okay, why just these four chords? What if the song you're playing doesn't have any G chords in it at all? Well, that is where, and I mentioned this, again, it feels like every live stream I'm mentioning the same kind of things, but this capo, okay? Whether you're using a G seventh capo like this, this one basically just adjusts to the tension that you use with it. Or if you have one of those Kaiser capos where it's kind of like spring loaded and you're just putting it into place. I want to show you what it's what we're able to do by getting a capo. You don't have to get this one, okay? Many capos out there. Diodario makes a capo. I believe it's like six or seven dollars, and it's got a uh, tension rod, kind of like a knob that you turn. But if you take a capo, and let's say all you know is G, C add nine, E minor seven, 
and D. The reason you can get by so far with just those four chords is that if you combine that with this capo, now all of a sudden, let's make up a song. So I don't, I don't want this one to get copyright. I've had many of my videos get copyright for playing songs. But if I'm playing a song that's G to C to D, but it needs to be an A flat. Well, what I can do is just take my capo, put it on the first fret, play the same chords. Let's say it's in the key of A. If you're playing a song that's in the key of A, you would put your capo on the second fret. So what am I doing with this capo? What I'm doing is I'm transposing the chords that I already learned. I learned G, but I didn't learn how to play A. Well, rather than learning the A major chord for right now, again, speaking to beginners here, I want you to learn A major at some point, okay? But if you don't know how to play A major and you do know how to play G shapes, you would just take this capo, put it on the second fret, and now you're physically still playing the same shapes as a G major chord, but what is being heard is an A major chord. Okay? It goes even higher. So of course you can put it on the third fret. That would be a B flat. If you're familiar with a piano, the notes on the piano, what we're doing is we're going up a half step. So without a capo, I'm playing in G. First fret, I'm playing in A flat. Second fret, I'm playing in A major. B flat, B major, C major, okay? At this point, capo five, Personally, it's probably the highest that I'm gonna go. We're kind of getting into like ukulele and mandolin territory when you're up on the fifth fret. If you were just in a rough spot, like you had some sort of wedding event or somebody singing and they wanna do a song, I guess the worst would be <laughs> if you're trying to make your way up to F, and all you know is G, C, E minor, and D. Well, to get to the key of F playing G chords, the second fret's A, fourth fret's B, fifth fret is C, seventh fret is D, ninth fret is E. You would have to put this capo on the 10th fret. And I don't even know with this one, <laughs> this guitar is not a cutaway, okay? I've got this big piece of wood right here, but if I can get my hands here, <laughs> Kind of sounds like a Colby Calais song, <laughs> something at the beach. It's kind of difficult to play up there, but anyway, this is way higher than I would ever take a capo. But again, if you're just taking the four chords you've got, if you're playing an electric guitar, this is gonna be more than possible for you to put up on the 10th fret. But get yourself a capo, and the reason these four chords will make any song work. I say any song, there's always gonna be exceptions, but pop music, modern music, worship music. If you're a worship leader at your church, you probably already know G, C, E minor, and D. But the reason that it works out without getting extremely theorizing right here, I don't wanna be super nerdy, but we did a live stream about the major scale, and I broke down what makes up a major scale, how do you create a major scale? Well, the thing I want you to know is that when you're in the key of G, a G major chord has the notes represented G, B, and D. So G, B, and D make up a G major chord. Well, what about the note A? A is a note within the key of G. Well, to play a chord that has the note A in it, that's why you're gonna learn D major because that second fret of the G string, that second fret is the note A. So if someone's singing G, A, B, C, that's why we learned the C chord, C add nine, D, E, F sharp, and G. So all of the notes within the scale, the G major scale, are represented by using these four chords. 
You could also get away with, again, I wouldn't recommend just learning three chords, but you could leave E minor off completely and just be playing G, C, and D. Many of the hymns that we do in church, many of the hymns can be accomplished with what's called the one, four, and five chords. So G, C, and D will carry you a really long way. Why is that? Because if this is G major, it's the G major scale. There's only seven notes in a major scale. I have G. The next note is A, so I'm going to go to a D chord. Next note is B, so I can go back to G. There's our B. Next note is C. Next note is E. I could stay on this C chord. C chords are made up of C, E, and G. I probably didn't say this earlier. G chords are G, B, and D. C chords are made up of C, E, and G. D chords are made up of D, F sharp, and A. And if you wrote out all of those notes, you would have some of them that doubled up. But in, within G major, all of your notes are represented. If you have a singer and they're hunting for the note and they're like, I'm singing the note A, so I need you to play a chord that has an A in it. You can play a D major chord. So while it may not sound exactly like whatever song you're playing. Like you may be playing, I don't know, How Great Thou Art. Well, they may specifically on How Great Thou Art, they might go to a D7 chord, but you're gonna stay on the D major. It may not sound exactly like something that's in the hymn book, but you're playing a simplified version. And then as you learn more chords, your tool belt will get bigger and bigger, every chord that you learn is just another tool in your belt to add to the mix. So maybe the next time you're playing in G major, you're like, you know what, I wanna add another chord. I know G, C add nine, I know E minor seven, and D, but maybe you wanna learn A minor, or A minor seven. Well now, anytime that singer wants to sing the note A, and you're in a key of G, You've got options. You can play either the D major like we talked about, or you can play A minor. It's gonna give a different feel to the song. All right, I wanna show you something real quick. All right, over on YouTube, let me see if I can rearrange this, how to make this. Ba -ba -bum. Mm. Sorry, I don't know if that's gonna work. Let's try, I thought I have a different layout. Let's see here. Okay, over on my YouTube channel, so youtube.com slash heychrisgreen, there is, I'm assuming the this user on YouTube, I don't have any profile picture, we haven't discussed any gender stuff, but this is a comment that came in and I wanted to address this as we're talking about the D major chord, okay? My vision is terrible, excuse me. Okay, I believe his name is Cyril. If that's wrong, please let me know, Cyril. You're probably in the chat right now. Okay, he says, Bravo Chris, I'm struggling against the D major chord because of my fat and short fingers. Can you help me please? Okay, so first of all, Cyril, I'm assuming Cyril is a man. If I'm wrong, let me know in the comments section, but Cyril has been all over the place when it comes to my YouTube channel and I believe here on Facebook as well. Always with positive comments, always saying thank you. So I really wanted to address this specifically on a live stream because what he's asking about is pretty common among guitar players. So when I'm teaching you a chord, I know that it's seemingly easy because you hear people playing guitar and things that like I can forget and things that guitar players will forget over time is just how difficult things were early on. So this question is probably gonna be the same for most of you. Maybe you're trying to fret these chords and you feel like either because of your hand or your fingers, something's not working out. So here's my recommendations. First of all, whenever I'm playing D major or any chord, I always try to say, sometimes I forget, but use the fingering that's gonna be most effective for you. What I mean by fingering is if I tell you to put your pointer finger on the second fret of the G string, to put your middle finger on the second fret of the E string, and put your third finger on the third fret 
of the B string. Okay, that would be like scholastically speaking, that's the proper D major chord. I actually, by being self-taught back in the day, I learned my D major chord like this. I used my middle finger on the second fret of the G string instead of my pointer finger. Now this one, ergonomically, it looks and feels better, but what I learned was this, and I had to get used to being able to swap it up. If something like this is a stretch for your index finger, well try swapping it with another finger because at the end of the day, no one is going, other than guitar players, nobody is going to be raging against you because you swapped fingers at the end of the day, if it's a D major chord, that's what you're going for, okay? So maybe making those adjustments. If you were at a gym and you were trying to lift heavy weights and you had some sort of disability, well, it would be foolish for me to tell you you just need to lift the heaviest weights possible. They make rubber bands. They make ellipticals for people who can't do treadmill. There's all these adjustments. And on the guitar, it's the same. So make the adjustments of maybe using some different fingerings. There's also just different ways to play D major. This would be significantly more difficult for a beginner, but you could also bar your pointer finger. So if Cyril is telling me on YouTube, again, he's saying that he's got short, stubby, or short and fat fingers. Well, one of the things he can do is use a bar, bar his pointer finger across the G, B, and E strings, because if it is a chubby finger, well, you might be more successful with using bar chords. Then you can take your middle finger, put it on the third fret of the B string. And now this is your D major chord. Another thing I want to point out, I'm going to grab another guitar real quick. Okay, so this is my electric guitar. One of the things I wasn't sure is, is Surreal using an acoustic or is he using an electric? If you're struggling to make sound with your acoustic guitar, I would consider maybe swapping out for an electric guitar. This is an acoustic guitar neck. This is an electric guitar neck. It may not come across on camera, but when I grab these two guitars, there's a significant, significant difference in the density of these necks. This electric guitar is easier to play than my acoustic guitar. Electric guitar strings are also much lighter. You can see just in the camera there, the camera is picking up my acoustic guitar strings because they're thicker. My electric guitar strings are much thinner. Also, not every acoustic guitar is created equal. So if Cyril's having problems with the spacing of the strings, well, this nylon string Yamaha, do you notice how far apart the strings are spaced. I can see a much larger gap going this way in between the strings than I can on this one. So a classical guitar, it has more of a girth going this way than my acoustic guitar does. Now I believe, I believe that's because on the classical guitar, we're doing a lot more finger picking with nails and things like that than we are on the acoustic. Acoustic, we do a lot more strumming. So one of the things is most likely, I'm not denying that you have some sort of, like Cyril saying in the comments, he's having trouble playing a D major chord. We can have things that are, everybody's just got different bodies, okay? Some people have longer fingers, some people have shorter fingers, wider fingers all of that stuff. Today, we live in such a time where th if you have access to a music store or a pawn shop, just go to a music store, grab some different guitars, and maybe you can find one that's specifically made for someone with your hand issues in mind, if that makes sense, okay? So it may just be the guitar itself. It may just be, you know, getting used to fretting chords on the guitar, because if you're brand new to this, and you're learning D major, it can feel like they're all just jumbled together. I can promise you, if you put the work in, just about 15 minutes a day, working through some of these noises and these pains on the guitar, you'll start to be able to stretch them out. So see how far I can stretch this D major chord. You can see the spaces in between my fingers. 
Starting out, you might be doing something like this. Look how close my fingers are together. I'm still making a D major chord, but as I get more comfortable, I can spread things out and have a little bit more space there. There's also just different ways to play D major. You could play literally with just two fingers. You could play a D major chord. You could play a D major chord like this. Now this is a painful bar chord. This is an A bar chord with my ring finger. And then my pointer fingers barring across the fifth fret. So this is D major and this is D major. You could just use the bar chord every time you need to do D major. You could also take this C major root position, slide it up two frets. You can use that D major. It does have the note G in it. But some people really like the sound of that better than just root position. Okay. Now, if you're not subscribed or you've not hit the like button or the follow button, if you're watching on Facebook, the best thing you can do to support the channel so I can bring you more videos just like this, hit the follow button. I believe on Facebook, we're just about at 10,000, which is crazy. We might do a celebration stream. Uh, so help me get to 10,000 on Facebook, hit the follow button. On YouTube, hit the subscribe button. Feel free to check out any of the live stream videos. They will be available as soon as I stop casting you can rewatch this video, catch back up at your own convenience. Okay. I do have to get running. Appreciate everybody for tuning in and good luck with your guitar playing. I'll see you at the next live stream.